Welcome to my podcast. Um, I'm going to start doing some mini interviews with a number of guests that I have that I'm going to introduce to you. Um, as you know, or as you may not know, my name is Anne Bayford. I'm a psychic medium. I'm a teacher. And I trained in psychology and I'm also a therapist as well. There's many areas of that field I've looked at. And I've noticed recently a number of my clients who've been coming to see me and my students um, have been asking questions about many of the areas, many of the fields, uh, as in, for instance, spirituality, their journey, and have, I know that certain areas, as in, if we look at uh, teaching practices, as in tarot cards or psychic mediumship might not apply to them or astrology might not apply to them but something else might apply to them i wanted to bring everything together i wanted to, to talk to individuals who are on their own personal journey and how it's brought them to where they are and uh, to look at what they're doing and their method and the idea was for that was that at the moment on this planet at this time lots of people are becoming inquisitive about their life journey um about which avenue to go down and I wanted it to be more like a signpost, a signpost to help individuals to uh, learn and know there is many, many areas of how you find your awakening. And really it's up to you to have a little look at what really applies to you, what suits you best. But the idea was to bring a collection of people that I know, who I trust, uh, and to give their views, their overall, <laughs> overall views of what's going on for them and their journey and what they specialize in or what they're interested in. Um, I'm going to be introducing you to Rebecca Robb and uh, some of you might know, some of you might not know that uh, Rebecca's my daughter but that's irrelevant because we're very different. Like all families, we may not, even if we have brothers or sisters, we may not be the same as them and that's why I thought it was important that to share this that just because my beliefs, my values and what I do doesn't mean that everyone else around me, they're going to believe in that or it's their direction or their path or their journey. So I just wanted to bring Rebecca Robb to you today to have a little look at what's happening for her um, and in the sense of what she can uh, introduce to you that are going to be listening to this. So one of my questions, um, hi, Rebecca, first. Hi. <laughs> I hope these these leaves aren't going to be too loud. I kind of wanted to give it like a, a Bali-esque kind of vibe, but um, I am in a garden in London. Um, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the nature and I think it's very important for the subject we're going to be looking at today. And I'm sure it's sure. not a problem. So that's absolutely fine. <laughs> so I know recently you've been, well, not just recently, you've been on a journey for a number of years, your own journey. And I know, you know, how it's sort of come about to some degree, but I wanted you to share that with others, because uh, I think it's really important that other people know that, you know, especially people who are just looking at life in a different way, what we're having the pandemic happening over this last year or so globally, that when they're now starting to awaken or start to want to um, look at different possibilities for them, sort of spiritual side or whatever, or religion, it's entirely up to you but I wanted that you to share your journey, what, you're, what you've trained in and what you're helping others with as well, because it's, it's fascinating what you're doing. Um, it's very different from what I'm doing, but a combination of bringing lots together as well. So uh, could you give us a brief outline of what you're doing right now? I know it's called human design, but can yeah. you make it as simple as you can? Because I know there's parts of it that aren't that simple. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's um, yeah, an interesting one. Going back to what you were saying about the journey to get there, um, it's an interesting one. So my journey into kind of faith and spirituality and kind of belief systems I mean, I started off at a Church of England school um, with my brother and you sent me there, so you'll know, but that kind of environment, religion, for me, didn't resonate with me. And, you know, I was in that school for a long time and I really appreciate and respect everyone's views in those senses. Um, but as I moved through life and, I mean, at the age of seven, you ended up having your near-death experience with your car accident. And as soon as you had that experience and went on your own spiritual journey, being around that was what opened my eyes to another path, not just religion, but there are different belief systems. Um, and that's where I started on my spiritual journey. And especially when I moved out of the house, when I went to university, when I started doing my traveling and moved away and was very independent, I 
took some of the things that I learned from your own journey and started embodying them into my own journey. So things like going to psychic mediums or tarot card readers or astrologists or astrocartography, anything. I love it. I'm fascinated by the kind of mystical elements. Um, and that was going on for maybe 10 years. I don't know. It was, it was a really long time when I was going on that spiritual journey. But for me, I found there was a gap. Something just wasn't filling that for me. Um, and everything has its place even now. I mean, yesterday I went to see a psychic medium, a tarot card reader. Um, so I still very much believe in all of that um, stuff and I would still go and do that. But something wasn't sitting right with for me. I wanted to see it. I'm a very, very logical person, very sciencey. And I wanted to be able to see it for myself um, and understand myself better. And it was interesting. So I was having a conversation with my friend. I was having like a major burnout and I, I burnouts are quite frequent for me. I just get really energetically drained and I can never work out why. I feel like I'm doing the same as everyone else or I can't keep up with them. And I'm just like, I haven't done enough. I need to do more. And during this one burnout, a friend said to me, have you checked your human design chart? And I was like, oh, I'm not gonna do one of these tests again. I don't wanna know my, my leadership type. I don't wanna know this, but I was like, okay, I'll do it. And I got my chart up. And it was a very complicated looking chart and it was almost like a circuit board. I was like, what is this? And that's where my journey started into human design. And to go into what human design is, it's kind of like, it, it looks like a circuit board for a start. It combines lots of different disciplines. It combines the science, which I love because it is scientifically backed. And it also um, combined spiritual and ancient wisdoms. So some of the science includes are quantum mechanics, bioengineering, genetics, astronomy, and some of the ancient wisdom of the Hindu chakra system, the Chinese I Ching, the Jewish Kabbalah system and astrology. So it combines so much into this one chart. It's kind of like looking at it as your energetic imprinting or your energetic DNA. And because of that scientific backing, we can then have biological associations and we can actually link some of the things in the chart to your actual genetics and some of your cycles inside of you so for me going through that spiritual journey was so important um and as i've said to you kind of before um the kind of mainstreamness of the spirituality didn't resonate with me and that was stuff on instagram that's so different than going to someone who's a professional and doing a session with them and really getting that um one-on-one -on -one information that's kind of channeled or um yeah going through the tarot cards and stuff that's different but the mainstream spirituality just didn't resonate with me and that was something that I wanted to explore deeper and that's what kind of led me onto this human design journey that makes sense because you know as I know as a therapist you know when I have individuals everyone's very different they have their you know people who are going to be very logical minded and practical or science-based or you know there's a different type of people around the whole world um, and so I like what you're doing for me. I mean, you know, science was my, you know, I started off how I started off in psychology and stuff. Um, it's different for me. I think obviously because when I do my sittings with my clients, it's very different. You know, I have a relative that pops through or I work with my guides or, you know, whatever. So it's that sort of feelings and, you know, how I express it to my clients. But I know that I've had clients that I've wanted also assistance in a sense of, about knowing a little bit more in depth and with you doing this it's made me interested in saying okay there's this other side that you can have a little look at you know human design uh you know by looking at all the different levels of what's going on inside them and you know what i've heard from you and uh, and seen some of the books you're looking at i'm, I'm glad i've sort of finished the study into some <laughs> i mean even though i'm constantly reading and you know professional development is always there but yeah it's quite technical and there's not a lot out there on the internet that sort of explains enough about no. it this thing, but it's very um so it's so new it's so new so it was the information was it was channeled through someone so first of all the guy who founded it um i think he would describe himself as being quite skeptical for a start he always liked to know why if someone did, said they did astrology they go well, why does that work like how does astrology work so he was skeptical but he still is quite a mystic um and he had a very strange encounter and that's where he's channeled this information through but that was in 1987 so out of all the tools that i'm aware of and maybe you're aware of this is relatively new compared to those and, and 
Yeah, sorry, no, I don't want to interrupt you. No, I, I know what you mean, because there's some bits of it I've read that you've shown me or we've looked at the books together. It really, I like the fact they overlap yeah. all of them. So sometimes somebody might look at astrology um, and they, they look at that and then they might look at the tarot and then they've looked at numerology and they look at all the different areas. I think for me, what I like about and what you show me so far is that one, it's technical, that's not my thing. I don't do tech. Um, but the other thing, what I do like about it is that it brings everything together. Because I know, um, you know, me training as a therapist and a counsellor and, and looking at psychology, there are crossovers in spirituality and religion with that as well. Well, let's say spirituality more. So I like the fact that it brings everything into overlay. And like you were saying about the founder of this, he was channeled the information. So Yeah. Was, and although, although it all comes together, it's it's its own kind of thing in itself so like yeah it has astrology in it but there's no way that I could compare it to astrology so like um with the kind of charts we do use planetary locations to determine your chart but in kind of the usual sessions you'd have in astrology you just have your natal chart now in human design we have both the natal chart and a retrospective prenatal chart and having those two designs together show this unique fusion that no other discipline is able to kind of show and you were saying how exact it is there's so many combinations so many factors that are involved in building your chart it show it's you know what human design is called the science of differentiation because it's literally here to show you how different you are than anyone else because the chart that you have and who you are is never it's never happened before and it's never going to happen again and it's this kind of belief that if you don't get your kind of uniqueness out it's never going to get out you you have such unique thoughts and such unique feelings that we really need to share where if it's appropriate for your chart you really need to get that out um yeah I just I love that kind of element of it and the exactness of it so without going into too much detail there are 64 different gates in the chart and each one of those gates can be expressed in 1080 ways wow. now you have 26 in practice in printing factors now think about how many combinations of potentials that could be no one's ever going to have the same chart as you that's why human design is so specific but that's, um, that's what, what I, I love you liking it as well because um you know i'd say to go with your gut feeling and yeah. struggled with that that wasn't yeah. your thing but when you started coming across human design you, know, you said to me oh god look and this is now this makes sense this is how i do things so you do things in a different way from how i would say to somebody well maybe go with your gut feeling but for you, what, what was that moment? Because it was like an aha moment, a light bulb moment. Because yeah. I noticed it, you was like, oh my God, you know, I can accept myself. This is okay. I can surrender. You know, I give myself permission, you were saying, to yeah. interpret the world how you do. So what happened that moment? Well, this is the thing. So human design literally puts a mirror up and says, this is who you are. And human design puts can kind of categorize everyone into four different energy types. And that kind of determines how you move through life. It determines your aura type. And now 70% of humanity are a type of generator. There's the kind of pure generator and there's a manifesting generator, which is a subtype. And I mean, our household, I've been brought up with all generators around me. Um, so when I was saying at the beginning, that I constantly felt tired, constantly felt like I wasn't doing enough, that everyone else was doing way more than me. And it, I would get burnouts and you guys would carry on. I was like, I'm ill. Like there's something wrong with me. The amount of times I went to hospital to go and get a test for anemia yeah, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. all of this stuff. Um, this is what I mean. So when I first saw my chart, I wasn't a generator. I don't have access to this life source energy, which all generators have. And that life source energy is also, uh, it's like, it is almost like a gut feeling in the sense that you, you kind of tune into it and say, do I have the energy for this? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Do I have the energy? Yes, no. Whereas I, when you kept saying like, listen in, do you have the energy for it? Does, what's your body saying? I looked at my chart and I was like, oh my gosh. I don't have that in me. I'm something called a projector. And now there are lots of different types of projectors. Projectors are about 20% of the population. It always kind of fluctuates depending on how many people are born and die, the kind of, but I'm a projector. And out of the projectors, I'm something called a mental projector. And it just means that out of all the centers, like if you think of the Hindu chakra system in a human design chart, you have nine centers. So it's based on chakras, but it's slightly different. There are nine centers and I only have two of them to find. I have my mind, my ajna, they call it, and my throat. So I'm really here to be um, kind of 
quite quite logical and it was interesting because throughout growing up and you've been on your spiritual journey it was always you need to get out of your head you need to stop being so logical when you do meditation you need to clear your mind and I was like but I trust my mind I can't trust anywhere else and that showed me that in my design. I am fluid everywhere else. I'm here to learn about emotions. I'm here to learn about this mystical life force energy. I'm here to learn about how to survive all of these different things and stay healthy and feel well-being. All of these different centers are open, but I am rooted in my mind. That's the only thing that is constant, fixed and reliable in me. So when we go to meditations, I was like, I can't switch that off. And it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, and that's why I wanted to do this sort of podcast so that, you know, as a therapist, it's like, you know, certain techniques I'm taught and trained in. And then, you know, if you think of how many people in the world that see therapists and I was, I was looking at this thinking, my God, this is how you're thinking and feeling to some degree and the human design fits in with you. That's your thing. And for me, I'm really about signposting, helping people to find the right things for them. And, you know, and I started at the very beginning by saying that, you know, you're a member of the family, but, you know, we can all be so different and you are very different from how we are. To me, as I suppose as a mother, you know, I'm thinking, oh my God, she overthinks too much. She's thinking this and, you know, she, you know, why does she overthink it? She's just like, you know, go with it. Um, you know, and then as a therapist, you think something else and then, you know, psychic medium, there's something else. So I think it's, you know, for me, it's really important to, I'm going to do a number of these podcasts with many different people because I just feel there needs to be a signage out there in a sense of a signpost to direct people on their pathway. So human design has really clicked into place for you. It sort of helped you to understand you. And that's the thing. And that was one of the things today, how I wanted to check in with you in the sense of, so by your skills and what you've been studying and what you've been learning, and I know that, you know, you're continuing your ongoing training like all of us we always do you know we'll do that to the day we die and I know you're at certain stages in your training but you're able to do the introductions and move on and do different stages with with clients now so I wanted to sort of ask you how do you feel it can benefit people by them knowing a little bit more about the human design so if someone came to you um, how, how would it help them to make sense of themselves yeah, well, as you were saying, it's like any of these sessions that people go to, whether it's a counsellor, whether it's a psychic medium, whoever it is, the, the, you know, people are going because they want to understand themselves better, because they want to trust themselves better. And as a therapist, etc., in all of these different disciplines, you're trying to give them the best tool so that they can trust themselves, that they can know themselves and make decisions for themselves. Now, with human design, it's very much this belief that, you know, we need to align with our uniqueness. And to do that, it's all about decision making. That is life. We are here to make decisions that we can't we can't escape that. But what's interesting now is because of this kind of generalized stuff on social media, the stuff that isn't this intricate stuff you go to a therapist about, um, we've kind of lost touch with our own independent decision making tool. We don't know how we make decisions because we're so um, kind of stuck in societal messages and societal conditioning that was like wait what's us what's right for us what's right for them is it the same for them the same for me we don't know um, and human design kind of that's one of the gifts it, it gives you a reliable way of making decisions as yourself and in human design it's very much the mind is never the authority so this is what we call it the authority the inner authority some people have an outer authority like myself so it's going the mind is not the authority and from even the first session I do with, with clients, I first of all go over the background of human design because it's very new. It's really nice to understand how these charts came into existence, what they all mean, what's, what's the synthesis of all the information. But then we go through the three most important things, which are your energy type, which as I said, so yours is a generator, mine's a projector, there's also manifestors and reflectors. And then we go into your strategy, how you move through life. And then we go into your decision making tool. And this is the most important thing. It's moving away from the generalized advice. And, you know, if, if I was going to go into a job instead of going to my friend, oh, I don't know what should, I should do. Should I do it? And allowing someone else to make the decision for me, my parents to make the decision for me, my friends, a therapist to make the decision for me. It's just saying you have a reliable way of making a decision for yourself and it's always from within it's either going to be an emotional clarity waiting for that to kind of you like people that have a defined emotional center have experience a wave of emotions it's simply stepping back and allowing that wave to kind of go and you gaining 
a higher percentage of clarity over what you're making a decision over. Um, so yeah, it's, that's the main thing that comes out of it, making decisions as yourself. And by doing that, you get you, you go on to your alignment, aligned path with your uniqueness rather than um, something we call like a not self. Simply, you're not being yourself, you're going through your societal conditioning. So you've got your true self and your not self. And you were saying earlier about signposts, human design is really good at this so it can look at your energy type your auric type and say you're going to experience two different themes so for a generator you're going to either be experiencing deep satisfaction of using your energy in the right way or you're going to be experiencing frustration and for me as a projector it's either experiencing bitterness of not being recognized recognition is really important for a projector bitterness versus success that those are the two themes for us um and yeah, that's that's where we kind of say, mind, you're not here to make decisions. You're here to be our reason maker. Instead, can you measure how close we are to our path by are we on our not self version of ourselves or are we on our true self version of ourselves? So, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's really important at the moment because um, I'm hearing this, you know, I have quite a lot of clients or students that come to me and it's helping them to find those tools. And as I say, this is the idea of by doing these podcasts with other like minded souls that to connect people to find the right person for them so you know it's okay I can do the life coach and I'm a qualified life coach and help people in their direction but I think what I've come across so much and so much more recently is that people are not really knowing themselves and unless you really know yourself and it's your journey of course it is to the day we die to some degree but if you know if you have a better understanding of who you are then I think it really helps you know and finding I mean I'm, you know, with myself, when you said, oh, you're a generator, I said, well, that makes so much sense. And we looked at it and I was like, well, yeah, I'm doing what exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And that's probably why I feel so fulfilled when there's a lot of people I know that haven't quite got to where they want to get to. And that's absolutely fine because life is a journey and this is why we're here, you know, and that sole purpose, you know, to find our mission and where we are. But if you can, you know, maybe have a little direction and have a better understanding of yourself, know thyself first, or know thyself better, because I keep hearing that all the time from my guides, then that then helps you to live more fulfilled, fulfilled life. And that's mm. the whole idea of bringing people together, like-minded souls, connecting them and trying to help them. And as I said, especially at this time when, you know, people are having major changes in their lives, you know, whether it's through redundancy or losing a loved one or losing their home or finances or whatever it is, because, you know, we all can be as spiritual as we want to be, but we still have to live a practical everyday life. You know, me giving up my job to do this because, you know, I was doing this volunteering at the beginning and, you know, not paying, not charging anyone. But then I had more clients than I could manage and I had to sort of change over. So, of course, you know, there's that exchange of service and finance. It makes sense that, you know, you have to receive in return so that you can continue doing what you want to do yeah. um, myself. And I think you're so right in terms of timing of this. Yes, we've got the lockdown, we've got the pandemic and there's bigger kind of timing around that. I don't think it's just a random thing that's occurred, you know, and I think you believe the same thing. Um, but especially from a human design perspective. So um, over the past 400, 450 years, we've been in a, in a global cycle that is rooted around kind of communities and really valuing um, supporting those people around us. Now we're just about to change into a new global cycle and think about it. So for the past 400, 450 years, we've seen the rise of healthcare systems, United Nations, U European Union, the United, United States of America, um, major cities growing, the industrial revolution, all of these things during this time where the global cycle was to support the tribe, to support the community, all of this stuff. And now we're moving out of it. 2027 is when human design predicts we're gonna go into a new global cycle, which is rooted in the individual. And we're already starting to see the kind of impacts of this as we're approaching that time and a lot of spiritual practices and a lot of other practices are saying certain things like this are gonna happen yeah. um but we're already starting to see that we're seeing you know we have brexit we're leaving the european union or we've well we've left the european union now we can look at america there's a lot of turmoil going on we can even see i mean on the news at the moment you've got the protests that are going on northern ireland you've got the vaccine that's being produced but being held back for the benefit of other countries rather than other countries there's less sharing it's more about the individual and the whole reason i bring this up is it's so important now to learn these tools for ourselves because as we start moving towards that new global cycle and it won't happen overnight it's going to be a, a process um 
we have to know ourselves better because those systems we might not be able to rely on as much um because we're going to have this kind of background noise that's going to be focused on yourself it's very individual very self-empowering very centering so there's going to be a change and I think that's something you've kind of said as well isn't it yeah I mean I've done that in a lot of energy forecasts and I've seen that um, channel and going to trance a lot um but and I and and some people are quite fearful when you say change because yeah I know Cool. Yeah. But I mean, since the planet's been created, there's been change. You look back to different societies, the Maya, you know, going all the way back hundreds and hundreds of years, there's always been a cycle. So on the planet, there's always a cycle going on, you know, civilization with nature, you know, nature constantly has her seasons, has mm. her cycles, you know, animals, nature around us, you see it. So it's nothing to be fearful of. It's just literally there is change happening. We've been aware of it. We've been caught up in all this pandemic. Um, and it's going to have that global sort of consciousness that will awaken in, in, in many people That's when right. I mean awaken it's just people are going to start realizing maybe they want to live life a little bit different you know I've yep. many people have had come to me um, you know as a therapist where you know they're stepping out of a relationship what do they do next where do they go or they're on the verge of that or they're changing their job you know so having been a life coach with them as well helping them to move forward there's different stages to it mm. um but it's if, if the thing is i think sometimes people get quite fearful and they go into that hide into their shell mode or their cave or wherever you want to say um and hope it will pass by them like a storm it's it's not and if for you to do that it would be then you're crippling yourself you're not enabling yourself so that's the whole idea of you know, I give my clients, I've been in this for many years, we're giving them techniques and tools to, to go about and to live their life. And, you know, thankfully, through recommendations, constantly getting new clients from them being passed on because how it's changed their life and checking in with them every so often. And that's why I wanted this to be spoken about the human design, because there'll be some clients that I have that, you know, they've either come to me as a psychic medium and we've looked at what's going on for them or a loved one's given a message saying, yes, this is the time to make that change. It's you're at a crossroads, you know, and I've worked through them as a therapist or then we go into life coaching or whatever. But there are there is a percentage of some people that would the human design. I can see with some of my clients that they that would be it because it offers them a different way. Mm. So and it might be that some people might want to have a little look at that because I know you do like an introductory thing that you can offer that where you'll sit with them um, and you'll do your little bit with them and you can do different, you've done, what is it, five stages or something you can share? Yeah, so there's five stages. So since I um, found out my chart, um, I mean, look, so the only the only channel that I have in me, if you look into human design, you have channels in you. That's where your life force is. The only channel that I have, I have one. And it's all about structuring. It's all about taking information, conceptualizing it in a different way and then bringing it into existence. Um, so that's what I do. I can't help it. So I put it into five steps and that's how I want to do it for now. Um, so the first session is the introductory. It has half of it's going to be about human design. Half of it's going to be about the three most important things in your chart. Now, even if you do that one session, that is enough because human design believes it. Human design is an empirical system. You prove it through your experience. Um, the guy that founded it in 1987 went on his own journey. He didn't believe it. As I said, he was quite skeptical. And it wasn't until 1992 where it actually came out into like the public and started speaking about it and talking to other people about it. So he went on his own journey. Same with me. So um, even if I look back retrospectively over what I've been through in my kind of human design journey, um, things like I've done so much traveling and I could never find my place. Um, so through my own experiences, I've worked out, I get more opportunities when I'm in places that really resonate with me. And what I didn't know, and I look at my human design chart now is I have an open G center, identity center, which is all about that kind of direction and identity and finding love. And I was always searching for the right places, the right people, the right love, all of this stuff. And I could never understand why everyone around me could have this kind of solid identity they were just them and i was always kind of searching and so that's one of the, my examples of how on my own journey i've been able to see that i'm a different person in so many different places because i'm here to almost be very fluid and almost like a chameleon fit into different environments and learn and experience them so what i'm trying to say is the first session when you learn about those two most important things and you learn a little bit about your chart that is enough if you're making decisions as yourself and you're moving closer and closer towards your true self and aligning with your unique geometry um that's enough you, you can go on your human design journey with that 
But if you do want to look in a little bit deeper, the second session is looking into your not self. It's identifying areas where you're really vulnerable to societal conditioning, where, you know, we have social media, we have friends, we have family who are telling us to do certain things. Um, we have the pressure to explain why we've done a certain decision when actually, if you can explain, if you can give reasons for your decision, you've probably made it through your mind and it's probably not done with your inner authority or your outer authority. So your not self session really goes into those centers, but also looks at specific problems that you're having and identifying where they're coming from. And the third session is all about looking at your, your true self. It's looking at your kind of unique potential. It's looking at the kind of channels in your system. Um, it's looking at your profile. It's looking at loads of different elements of your chart to kind of throw that mirror back up at you and be like, this is you. Like, you don't need to be anyone else. You are uniquely you. Now, the fourth session is all about the people that are around you. So you can pick up to four or five people. Maybe it's the people that you live with. Maybe it's your family where you were growing up. And you can see how their charts would have impacted you. If So, for example, with me and you, me being a projector and bit living around loads of generators and me thinking I was ill, not being able to keep up, going through constant burnout, knowing that information, knowing that when I was in my head was actually quite correct for me was so reassuring um, and looking at people who I'm around now that's also really reassuring and then the final for this fifth session is hour and a half just deep dive into whatever you want to go into looking at all the different areas of your chart and holistically bringing it in as more of like an intuitive kind of session so yeah, those are the five. about really keeping it real isn't it with anything that any of the skills any of the techniques any of the practices that people wish to go seek out it's mm. also about keeping it real for them as an individual in their life yeah how it's going to help them this is the thing you know um and i think it's having those practical sides to it so i think i was talking to you the other day about you know if, what if someone wasn't sure about staying in their job or something there, there was all those things that we were talking about the other day how that can assist them and stuff so you know you were saying and you know finding out what i am it makes sense and that i'm on my right path i know that you know it feels right for me but as you know, we were saying, not for everyone, they're going to have that sort of sense of the feeling or knowing it's they, they need something else to sort of reassure them. Um, but yeah, so I've looked at it with you. And yeah, as I say, it, it, I love it how interweaves it into layers with lots of, uh, you know, uh, different beliefs and uh, spirituality, but also the science with it as well. And as I say, uh, you know, there are a few people that they're, that would want to do it mm. but i mean and i know you've looked at why you sort of started looking at it in your journey in the sense of what brought you to it but looking back i suppose now that i think now that you know what you are does that help you feel more comfortable in yourself or give you more direction or understand you better yeah in in so many ways so yes yeah, so this first of all energy stuff i don't have to keep up with anyone it gave me the permission to go i don't need to keep up with anyone the world is 70 percent generators and i am trying to keep up with that 70 percent. it's not going to happen um we take in energy in very different ways i'm a non-energy being whereas you are an energy being it's very different and knowing that was just a permission to go i knew that but now this system is saying you you can be like that you're not wrong you're not ill or anything like this um the identity sense, how I am constantly looking for the right places and kept feeling like, I just don't feel like I can settle down. I just don't feel this is right. I just don't feel this is right. I'm constantly looking for the next step. It's going, you're here to experience and be really fluid. Like chill, you don't have to search, it's gonna come. People that are around you, if you, if you meet the right people in the right places, right place comes first and then you meet the right people, you then start going on a different journey and you start aligning with all these amazing experiences. So that was an amazing thing for me. There are so many things that, this has just given me the permission about. Um, for a projector, you have to feel recognized. We have a different type of aura. It's a very focused and concentrated aura where we can, um, unlike a, a generator, generators have this really enveloping aura. They put an amazing life force energy out if they're using the energy in the right way. Um, and there's just so much. Every time I'm thinking, it's just coming into my head. But with a with a um, projector aura, it's very focused and concentrated right onto the identity center. So projectors are really here to be the guides the leaders the teachers that can really zoom in and kind of know what's right for that person but the thing is we can't choose who we guide we have to be seen and recognized and invited in 
So we are waiting for the invitation. If we give unsolicited advice, we're going to get a backlash going, I didn't ask for that. And that's something that I can really resonate with. And knowing that is right for me and my energy type and my aura, now I can just go, I know what they need, but I'm going to wait for them to recognize me. I'm going to wait for the invitation, whether it's energetically or actually like a physical invitation. Um, But knowing that was life-changing kind of thing. Um, And I suppose also it's like those who are questioning their direct their next step, their direction, their life purpose, their life journey. I think once you know thyself better, then you can get an idea of understanding where you're meant to be because you've never felt at home in the UK. So mm-hmm. it makes sense of also you being around certain types of people as well. I know we were saying this, you know, um, when I'm getting ready to work with clients and I charge myself up, you said you can always feel it in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. So human design is a journey, right? So it takes about seven years of deconditioning. So it, the information is really meant for children because once you start going through society, you start picking up these societal conditionings and it's going to take longer and longer to decondition from that process because of your cellular renewal, um, the process. So it's meant for children. That'd be great if parents could know about this stuff and then they could kind of tell their children or help their children be who they are rather than kind of the generalised what they what society thinks a child should be. Um, you could already see how I was in school compared to like some other people. Um, I didn't like the way that school was. It didn't really fit in for me. So knowing this information is really, really useful. But yeah, it is about this kind of deconditioning process. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 no, it, it does. And it also makes sense that, you know, you were saying that, you know, when I get charged up ready to work with clients. Oh, yes, this is it. So this, this is it. I completely kind of lost my train of thought. But human design very much believes that people should um, be within their own energy aura, especially during sleep, because my chart is very, very open. It's very, very fluid. I'm going to pick up a lot of the energy from other people. Um, and when we sleep, we're kind of recharging, we're getting our, it's something called a neutrino stream. The neutrinos are what kind of, it's like energy that's imprinted with information. So we're getting our information all throughout the day, but also all throughout the night. And if we're in the space of everyone else during the day, during the night, if we could just separate and be in our own space, we can align with who we are and learn about who we are rather than picking up the conditioning of other people. Um, but when I'm in the space with like you, for example, like yesterday you were getting ready to go out. I woke up at 7.30, not because of the sound you were making, because you were being relatively quiet. It was because you were so excited that you were going out and you were so buzzing. It's this buzzing generates energy and auras they don't they're not small auras go out six nine foot that are very large and with you with your enveloping generator aura I could feel that through the bathroom wall like we don't sleep in that kind of auric space but you were walking into the bathroom and I was like I woke up and I was like oh she's going somewhere I can feel it and this is the thing if um if you're living in like a flat or even in a house the wall won't stop neutrino energy going through you have to kind of you have to think Am I sleeping by a wall where the house next door to me, someone's sleeping because you're going to be picking up the energy without even knowing it. So there's so much that human design kind of covers. It's yeah, really interesting. And that, and that's, you know, I was, you know, I went on the tube for the first time in a very long time yesterday um, to go out into London. I needed a break and talk by the river. And it was really interesting because it made me start thinking as well. I mean, years ago, you know, when there's been things that's happened to me through my own trauma or whatever, you know, I've had panic attacks before in the past so I know how that feels and it was really interesting yesterday I got on the tube there was hardly anyone on there but on the way back there was loads of people and I really got me thinking that um you know we said about the auric fields and stuff like that and I work with that as well um it made me start thinking when people start coming out connect with one another there's going to be this you know <sighs> interwoven into you know weaving of other people's energy fields I mean I noticed that very much yesterday walking around London along the, the River Thames you know, there was quite a lot of people and, uh, you know, it was fine. And you could see like the, the social niceties of stepping to one side and allowing each other to walk past and everything. But it, there's, uh, I, I mean, me being a psychic, I was very aware of the energy field around me and those walking past me. And you can pick up, well, I, I did, I picked up some fear from some people so scared of like coming to that you know that within too much closeness of this social distance and it was it's not you know a meter two meters it was very quite close to this where they had to get through and I could sense their panic 
Um, and I had to remind myself to put my golden egg, my bubble, my, you know, protect my own aura. So I wasn't picking up on their feelings or thoughts. I mean, we've done this before when, <laughs> when you was little, um, you know, gosh, we've gone off subject a little bit, but it's just coming to my head where I'd say to you, Oh, I can sense something. I can feel something. Come on. And then, you know, we'd, I'd sort of take you to a burial plot in London or something where not didn't know it was there, but literally had a sense or a feeling or Jack the Ripper when we walked around in that area as well. So, which I've gone off, but it's in right. a way. But, but, but you know, th this is life. So like, this is the thing. We're always going to be around people. We're always going to be around or auric interactions. This is the experience of being human on this planet. Now, what's interesting about human design is that, you know, so hmm, how deep do I go here? So <laughs> humans are <laughs> made up of these like crystals. Uh, we have a design crystal and a personality crystal. The personality crystal is kind of like your soul spirit. It's who you think you are. It's very conscious. We're aware of who we are. The design crystal is kind of what built us. It's what was kind of was there when we were being built in the womb. And that is almost like it built your vehicle, which is our body. There's something else called the magnetic monopole, which is a one way attracting magnet it only attracts and that sits kind of in our sternum kind of area. Now, that magnetic monopole keeps us in the illusion of separateness, which we need as to be in this illusion of this world, this kind of planet, and to feel like an individual. Um, but we're always going to be around other people. Now, we have to experience that. Us in our consciousness, this personality crystal, um, is here to kind of experience life. Now, when we're making decisions through our mind and being consciously aware of things, we're not making decisions based on the full picture. And the magnetic monopole, which is this one way attracting magnet, which takes us on our geometry, which knows our path, or knows our journey. Um, it's kind of like the chauffeur of this, this car that this design crystal has built. Your personality crystal, the one who you think you think you are, is like the passenger, if we're gonna use that analogy. Now, when we're making decisions as the passenger, and we're going, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. Um, you're not, you're not, you don't know the journey. You're kind of going, yeah, let's, let's turn right here. Driver, can we turn right? And he's going, but I know our destination. Why do you want to turn right for? Why are we turning right? He doesn't know. So I think it's just an important analogy is that we're always going to be around other people. And where we're so open in different areas, when we kind of get off track and where we face this societal conditioning, our brain makes decisions through those areas. And when we're asking to turn left instead of right or experiencing certain things or trying to put defense mechanisms up instead of just experiencing this fluidity, which can be shown the exact areas in your chart, you know, it's taking us off track. So it's just being aware of who we are in a fixed sense who we are in a fluid sense where we're here to kind of really gain wisdom and instead of I, I mean I've had panic attacks but instead of now like experiencing things that are inconsistent and instead of instead of allowing my brain to make these defense mechanisms up to, allowing my brain to get really panicky I'm just saying experience it view it like the passenger out the window experience it learn the wisdom that you need to do and as soon as you leave the auric space as soon as you leave the aura and give it no 10 20 minutes whatever away from it you won't experience it. It's not yours. There are things that are yours and there are things that are other people's. So in human design, we can really see the fixedness. What is you? And we can really see what you're taking on from other people. And that's why it's especially important to look at relationships that are constantly there. Yeah, I mean, look, at, after this lockdown period, we're going to start connecting with human beings again. And that's going to be really weird. The other day I had to go to the post office. I got a new passport. That was an exciting moment. But I had to go to the post office. And I haven't really been around any kind of humans it was weird but as soon as Except I went that <laughs> yeah, apart from family this is the thing you and dad um but as soon as I stepped into the post office there was a horrible atmosphere and I didn't know what it was and I was thinking there's no like there's nothing going on there's no like people waving their arms around there's no physical arguments but it felt like someone just wasn't happy and I went about my kind of usual thing and then I spoke to the woman behind the desk and she was angry and I was like oh I didn't know that like I felt a vibe and now think about it we're going to be so sensitive to that because we've been away from it and we're going to pick it up and go oh, I feel really nervous here I feel this I feel that I feel this when actually it's not ours so it's knowing when it's not yours and knowing when you can leave a situation and see that's a good test if you're in a if you're around someone where you feel a certain way as soon as you leave their space if you still feel like that it might be yours if you walk away and you don't feel that it might have been something you picked up from someone else yeah and that that's what I love about these charts I now for example one of the most interesting things I found was this emotional center now there, there have been jokes that I'm unemotional in that in the house right that I 
don't know how to experience emotions that I don't you know it's it's a weird kind of thing that I've I've had throughout growing up I've always come from a place of emotional clarity and I can never understand that now what human design says is actually if you have a defined emotional solar plexus center you're going to experience your own chemistry set of emotions this wave of emotions and depending on which channels there are it would be a different type of wave now you are emotionally defined you I would say would experience a wave of emotions from hope to pain to love to joy all of this stuff right it's going to go on a wave whereas I come from a place of emotional neutrality if I'm in my own space and if a planetary transition isn't lighting me up we all we all experience every element of the chart but I loved that because every time I stepped into a room and I came from emotional clearness as soon as I stepped into a room and felt a strong emotion now I know that I'm picking up someone else's. And the thing is where I'm so open, I'm amplifying their emotion by about 200%. It's insane. I'm feeling that emotion more than they are. But I think that you needed to have, you actually had to read human design and to look at study it for you to know that. Because I've said that before about, you know, your auric field or anyone's when they go into a room you can that gut instinct and intuition. Sometimes we're talking about the same thing, but we might use different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's very much like, that is why I wanted to bring this together was that, you know, you'll hear some sort of terminology that's used in one area, which actually crosses over to another area as well, which is the same thing, but it's just different wording. So I would say to some of my students, you know, when you walk into a room and you pick up a, an atmosphere or, you know, an emotion, your, you know, that's your auric field, your, your gut instinct, your intuition. Whereas with your human design, for you, the words, the terminology that they've used and the way mm. they've described it, we're talking about the same thing, yeah. but you're using different terminology. And that is why I wanted to talk to and pop these podcasts out with many different people who are doing different practices. So that, you know, I mean, I was talking about something the other day and someone asked me a question. I said, yeah, well, you know, I'm an angel practitioner. You know, sometimes that resonates with some people, sometimes it doesn't. And that's why I learned all the different fields, all the different sort of sectors. Um, and they said, well, I didn't realize it was the same for that as well. And they really will get the, the information that we are receiving. You know, when I channel and I'm receiving information from my guides, you know, and that's how I work, but it's the same information, but we're using different terminology, but it's about those individuals how they can receive it. I know, as I said before, there is a number of clients, friends, or students that human design would fit them perfectly, like it has fitted you. Because I mean, we have been watching a movie together or we've seen something and someone's burst into tears and you turn around and look at me like, why are they crying? And I'm like, I understand. Why does she not, why does she not understand why they're crying? And there's been those moments, do you know what I mean? Mm. And But now you've understood, because I was like, oh my God, is there, you know, what, where's an there? issue? <laughs> what's going on where does Becky connect with their emotions why does she understand it of course I do because I'm an empath and I work in a different way from how you do Mm. um and you would probably use a different terminology again because I'm (laughs) in my charts um but I think for you doing the human design it's it's cleared it up it's like you know I speak one language you speak another language you with this language it's really resonated for you yeah you know what it was it was partially because I can see it I'm so logical and I need to see it. Now, the thing is, is that you're right. Everyone is saying the same thing and just in different languages. So like I've been to you and I've been a client of yours, kind of hard because we're family, but I've been to other spiritual people and they've said, you need to trust your thoughts. You've got some really interesting ideas. You need to get your ideas out there. Now looking at human design, those are the, that's my only channel. Like that makes complete sense. You're, you have essentially read the coding of my chart. You've essentially read everything that I can see now because I couldn't see that I couldn't understand I was like why do they keep saying my thoughts are important isn't that the same as everyone else but seeing it yeah helped me but I was going to say because that was someone who did tarot cards for you so but for you for actually um, seeing it more you needed to have a look at the human design chart so that's what I'm saying you know some clients or people whoever hears this this is really it's not saying go that route go no, exactly route, go whatever route. it's really about I want to bring a number of people together so that people can sit here and listen to this podcast you know if you subscribe you can listen to all the different podcasts and you'll get an understanding of what might resonate for you more than what someone does you know somebody else does you know somebody goes mm-hmm. to tarot or astrology or a, sh- a shaman or whatever i'm gonna be interviewing a shaman soon soon oh, as well um so that that's the idea i wanted to make it accessible for everybody to sort of you know 
find this information to find what resonates for them and so that they can have a look and maybe contacting whoever I have on podcast it's really important um so if anybody was really interested about maybe having a session with you um I know you were saying you're going to do a special deal at the moment for those who are interested that you know who, who go to your website or send you a message or whatever, that you were going to do a certain price them as well. And you were looking at what was, what was the details to that? So yeah, at the moment, all of the pricing is set at 30 pounds a session. So this is the lowest it will ever be. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the lowest it will ever be. So if, if you really want to learn about human design and your chart and you're thinking, not sure, most sessions are normally 150 pounds plus. So at the moment it's building a client base up and that's why it's at 30 pounds a session um that will go up at some point so if you're listening to this in the future and you go onto my site and it's more money unfortunately you missed it but (laughs) message me um yeah my site at the moment i don't have a website i have a scheduling system um which is online so we can link that in the description um below the video but if you can go onto my instagram it'll be linked onto my link tree so my instagram is rebecca emily rob um that will also be in the description below Um, just click onto the link and click book a human design session and you have those five different sessions they go in order so do go from one to two to three to four to five and there are other options there's a um, human design blueprint again if you're listening in the future I reserve every right to remove that from my site Um, and there's also a intuitive session which I think is priced at 55 pounds at the moment it includes just a little bit more work in that Um, and that is you can come with a specific thing that you're maybe dealing with at the moment or a recurring like uh, insecurity or something you constantly keep going over and we can look at your chart and see where that could be coming from and looking at techniques to overcome that but really I would recommend going through the five-step system simply because even if you just do the first session, that is enough information for you to start on your human design journey. And then each session further is just going deeper and deeper into helping you understand your own design and yeah, helping you with like mindset and all of that stuff. Thank you. I mean, I think it's important I, and it's not to persuade anyone to go in any certain direction, but the idea no. is that this, as I said, it's like being a signpost to direct people, like a directory of information. So I think that's the most important thing. And by putting this out so that others can hear this information, that you get a great understanding of who you are and what helps you and how you can then live your purpose, your mission to move forward, which is the most important thing, to be honest. We all need some help from time to time. Um, but this is what this information was put out. So exactly. Thank you very much for helping today. Was there something you was going to say? So yeah, I was just going to say it's obviously not about the money either. So for example, if you wanted to find out about your human design stuff, there is really limited information online. Um, the only place there's, if you wanted a book, there's only one book that's actually um, recommended within human design system. Lots of books have come out since, but none of them have been approved. So there's a book called the Definitive uh, Human Design Book, I think it's called. Anyway, it's by the guy who founded it, Ra Uruhu and Linda Barnell and there's a website called Jovian Archives which is one of the only official websites where you can generate a free chart it won't give you the information necessarily for free but once you have your chart you can then go into the different um, options on the site they have to do more research there are some free resources on there so feel free to look at your own chart but I would recommend going to someone that's trained yeah, because I've looked it's at so complicated <laughs> It was like looking at, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, my, maths is not my thing at all. I mean, it was a bit, I don't know. There was just too, I don't know. It was just my brain. I was sort of shut off to it. I was like, no, I don't, I didn't enjoy it at all. But of course, yeah. those of you out there that this is going to really resonate with you and you're going to be like, yippee, let's go for it. I'm going yeah. to be doing that. Yeah. It's down to each and every one of you. you- because you see the um you go into it and you go oh, I know my energy type that means I'm fine I'm a projector I'm a generator I'm this and then it goes into the next like oh okay I've got I've got this strategy I've got this profile I've got the thing is it's not looking at each thing individually it's really looking at your chart holistically so yeah. and I think yeah. again it's very similar to um you know when we, we look at maybe astrology and horoscopes and you sort of think oh yeah I'm a cancer and this means blah 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 which yeah. is really, I know that there's certain things rising in certain parts so for I'm not a typical cancerian you know I've got I can't remember what I've got right now but I got that's gonna in my head but it's not an overall oh I'm a cancerian this is what it means because when I've looked at it I'm like it actually I'm very different that's not how I come across so it's very much like that it goes into greater detail and depth and everything so, so much 
it's down to the individual but thank you so much for taking the time out and to explain us uh what you have done about human design um it still baffles me in a sense Um, yeah (laughs) still baffles me sometimes it's so it's so amazing the stuff that can come into that when I say it baffles me I mean how can it be this accurate I've had clients who I haven't seen in maybe 10 years and they go you don't know me how do you know that about me and I'm like we just I'm just reading the chart I don't know it's just there yeah yeah it makes so much sense okay thank you so much Rebecca um and as I say if anyone is interested in having a session it's entirely up to you this is information that's just out there for you to have a little look at um it's not to push you in any certain direction at all but it's just literally giving another perspective on the way how we receive information and helping you to move forward and as I say this is all about signposting people Um, with like-minded souls like-minded people that you know life is changing and if you want to have a look at something to help you as a tool there is this direction so all the details will be placed at the bottom um, underneath everything that you're going to read it will give you all the links to contact Rebecca or myself It's, it's entirely up to you and if you'd like to you can subscribe at the bottom as well and that means then you'll hear all the future interviews with all the other lovely people that I have in store with um, myself that will move forward but as I say subscribe and uh, you'll get your notifications when the new videos come out and then you can see what's happening in the world so thank you very much Rebecca enjoy the rest of your day I might have to come outside and enjoy the sun that. shines out no now <laughs> no now I can pretend I'm in Bali because it genuinely feels warm enough <laughs> okay, I'll be down there a moment <laughs> take see care you soon. Thank you. bye